it's Jess. Welcome back to my garden for another video. So today I am so excited, you guys. I'm actually gonna be kicking off my mini backyard makeover series. If you guys have been following along, you know I have several areas in my backyard I've been working on. Today I'm gonna be retiring Rehab Row and I am so excited for it. I actually have a sponsor for today's video. A company called Vivor has reached out to me and they've sent me some amazing products to help get this project done. So cannot wait to share them with you guys. Let me go ahead and turn the camera around and show you the area we're gonna be working on. Welcome to Rehab Row, or what was formerly known as Rehab Row. So this is the bed that I created a couple years ago to use as my rehabilitation bed. So I created this to have a place to plant all of my rehab plants that I buy on clearance, just to give them a chance to rebound until they're ready to move out into their permanent homes in my landscape. And last summer, I decided that I want to turn this into a formal hedge and retire Rehab Row. So I did plant all of these Homestar Barbavides last year. And I think I only have, oh, look at the butterflies. Oh, will you let me get close? I'm just gonna zoom in from here. So pretty. Oh. Sorry, y'all, I get distracted so easily. But I do have one additional tree down here that I need to replace. And that is this one right here, which I believe is a root watch situation. So if you stand and look at it from this angle, it doesn't look too bad. But this front side is completely dead. So I am gonna be digging that one out and replacing it. I do have one down here on the end, if you can see it in that pot. I have one that I'm gonna replace it with. I actually got two. So there's one in my garage. I bought an extra one just in case to keep one on hand in case I lose another one, um, just to pop it in and replace that one shrub. And then there's a ton of little random plantings still in this bed. I've got some random perennials tucked in here. I've got three crepe myrtle bushes over here. Just a lot of random clearance plants that still have not been dug out and found their permanent homes. I have several, I think I have eight, Limelight hydrangeas along the back line. I know they look like weeds, but those are actual hydrangeas that will be dug out and they're actually gonna be going to my neighbor's house. So, so glad I was able to find a home for those. The rest of them will be staying here in my landscape. So basically what the plan of action is, is going to be cleaning out all of the weeds. I want to form or create some type of weed suppressant and barrier to keep them from coming through the gaps in the gate of my neighbors. And then we're gonna be extending this out like I want to say about here-ish to make this a nice formal planting bed. So I'm so excited. I hope you all are as well. Let's go ahead and get to work. We've been driving around, singing songs way too loud because we want to. Picking up a love friends, fill up the car to live best because we want to. We want to. Yeah, we just want to have fun. The trunk's full of wine. We're going to stay up. The time of our lives, the night is in young, don't need anybody else. We came to party all night long, and we don't need no chaperone. We don't need nobody's attention, yeah, we just want to dance on our own. We came to party all night long. All right, y'all. Next task is going to be installing a hose reel so that I can water all of my gorgeous plants back here in the backyard. I'm going to be using this awesome auger that was sent to me by Vivor. And I'm thinking I want it to go right here, right tucked behind my Gurkaro here. I think it'll be perfect. So let's go ahead and just get to work. So this electric post hole digger comes with a drill bit that measures 39 inches by six inch diameter. And y'all, this got the job done with no problem. Like it was so quick and easy to dig this hole. It does lack reverse, so you just have to pull up to lift the dirt out of the hole. But other than that, it's super easy, totally worth it. You can use this for digging post holes, planting trees. I will have this link in the description box. All 
right, y'all. So we got the hole dug. So you want to make sure that you're setting the post at least two feet into the ground. Then we filled it in with some concrete, poured the water in. You want to make sure everything is nice and level. We're going to let this sit overnight and we'll be back tomorrow to actually install the hose reel. Alright y'all, so I finally got this bed all cleaned out and oh, look at that blank slate. Like yes, there's still weeds here, like all oh, this was weedy grass, but oh my gosh y'all, it looks so much better having all of those weeds and perennials removed. So all of the perennials that were planted in the front line have been removed, as well as on the back line. Let me give you guys a view of the back side. Look at that. All clear. All of the weeds have been pulled and it looks so much better. I did also dig out the tree that was dying here and y'all, I was right. It was root rotting. The roots were completely black and there's also some water puddling in the bottom of that hole. So I will have to do some amending in this area. And then also, let me show you guys. Not sure what's going on here. Like, why is this starting to like flop over like this? If anyone knows, please leave me a comment down below because I really don't want to lose these two trees. This one is actually doing the same thing. But it's just these two. So I think I want to dig out these two just to take a look at their roots, make sure nothing's happening underneath the soil, and repot them and try and save them. Oh, that one's starting to do it too over there. I don't know what's going on, you guys. All the rest of them are standing up nice and upright. No issues. So yeah. That has me a little bit concerned, so I am going to dig out the one that's like really, really drooped. Take a look at those roots. But tomorrow's project is going to be starting to edge and sheet mulch. I am so, so ready for that part. So I'll see y'all tomorrow. So it's day two of my makeover project and what I'm working on today is weed prevention. So I'm going to install these panels to prevent weeds from coming through the gaps of my neighbor's fence. These are galvanized steel landscape edging panels. They come in a pack of six. They measure 40 inches by eight inches tall and they do have serrated sliced teeth on the bottom to make it very easy to pound into the ground. So that way it'll prevent any weed grass or any weeds that spread underground from creeping into my bed. These steel panels are available in different heights and lengths. They can also be used to create raised garden beds. So if that is what you're interested in, definitely check these out. They are also bendable to follow along curves of your garden edging. I think I'll try this a new way. I'm gonna show you the tricks that I know. I'm getting tired of talking. And I need more of a show right now. It's time that you made your mind up. Lately all it ever does is change Feels like we're only talking, talking Going round and around, back around I will fight like no other every day I won't stop like the others All right, y'all, all of the edging is in. It does look a little bit wonky in some areas. Like if you can see, it's not completely level there just because of how the cement was put in the ground for the post. It's a little bit uneven, but which is fine. Like who's looking at the bottom rail? Not me. Um, and then I did have to leave some gaps. So the cement here, if you guys can see, let me zoom in. Do y'all see the cement here? I couldn't hammer this down any lower and so I just moved it over and I had to just like space it as I could. Same thing here, there's a big cement block here. So I just made a gap and just kept going down to the end. So glad that that part's done. Next order of business is going to be digging up these two trees. 
Y'all, if you see your plants doing something weird, they're trying to tell you something's wrong. So we actually just got a really, really heavy rainstorm and I figured out it's coming from my neighbor's gutters. So if you can see here, it runs all the way down and straight out to these two and they're sitting in water. So I wanna go ahead and dig these up. The back side of them is starting to brown really, really bad. I wanna dig them up, mount them up really high so I don't lose these two trees. Okay, y'all so this one didn't look too bad I'm still going to mount this up just in case because if you guys can see it's really starting to brown and that one over there is doing worse this one does have water sitting in the hole so let me go get some soil amendments and we will replant these to try and save them y'all so we're about to get another really bad storm i'm going to stop here this is like the fastest planting job i've ever done in my life i really don't think this is good i'll probably have to redo it but the clouds are rolling in the wind is picking up and it's starting to sprinkle so i'm going to stop here hopefully they make it through the storm if not we will just be back to replant them all right y'all just an update so the trees survived the storm thank goodness we had a huge downpour yesterday and look what else you guys this one has responded so well, like the stems are standing back up straight like they're supposed to. They're not, like this was completely flopped over yesterday. It was leaning like how these are, like spraying outward. So I am gonna fix this tree. I think I like really, really rushed that planting because it was really starting to come down. But y'all, I'm so happy with this one. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and bump these two up as well because if you can see this one's starting to show the same signs of the root rot. And they're also both sitting right in front of my neighbor's gutter. So. I want to go ahead and fix any potential issues now so that I won't have any issues later on. So I'm going to go ahead and dig up these three, mound them up nice and high, and then we are going to replace the one that I was losing here. And y'all can see there's still water sitting down in these holes. So definitely going to have to mound that one up as well. But let's go ahead and get to work. address this corner area over here so technically I do have space to plant one more tree and I actually have another one in my garage to finish off this hedge but I just think that I wouldn't be able to open my door all the way if I need to so I've been debating on what I want to plant over here and I think I've settled on an upright U they do get about 8 to 12 feet tall and wide which is going to be way too large for this space but I also read that it's very easy to keep them trimmed into the shape that you want to so that's what I'm going to plant next Okay, y'all, change of plans just that fast. I am not in love with this here because when I open the door, 
it pretty much is hitting the plant and it hasn't even filled out yet. So I think I'm gonna relocate this somewhere else in the yard and just move a container to this area. So I do have my pinky winky hydrangea that has been waiting to move to the backyard and I think it'll be perfect in this spot. So basically just to fill in this area, I'm gonna fill in this hole, lay down some cardboard to smother out all of the weeds and grass, and then we are going to set a paper down in the pot. My gosh you guys that looks so perfect like it fits that corner like it was meant to be there I am so excited to see the base all filled in and this be like all formal it's gonna be so gorgeous oh I'm so excited I'm glad I made that switch so next course of action is going to be laying down some landscape fabric and typically I do not like to use landscape fabric in my beds if I plan on planting like a lot or annually in my beds but because this is going to be a formal hedge I don't plan on planting anything on the back side of these ever again and as you guys saw the weeds in this area were horrendous I'm going to go ahead and lay down some landscape fabric just on the line of the arbs and then we'll sheet mulch the rest of the bed. Here's a look at the landscape fabric I'm going to be using today. It was sent to me by Vivor. Thank you so much, Anjanin, for sending this out to me. I was very specific with the type of landscape fabric that I wanted for this area. This is five ounce thickness and it is a woven fabric. So as you guys can see, it's very tightly woven. Nothing is getting through this, but it still allows water to seep through down to the roots. So I was very specific on that. I wanted something that is almost like commercial grade because I don't want to have to deal with any type of weeds in this bed. It measures five feet wide by 250 feet long. So I have plenty here to use in this project as well as future projects down the road. I'm so excited about this landscape fabric. So five feet actually measures right out to the edge of like my weedy grass line here. This lines up right where I dug my trench out last year. So I think it's perfect. I can always cut the fabric back if I need to, if I'm planting closer to the arbs, and then I can just sheet mulch the rest of the bed. So let's go ahead and get right to it. Let's set the tone, a bottle of red wine and pheromones. Conversation flows a couple of hours, see how it goes. I really trust my senses, catch me if I fall. So done with second guessing, you seem to have it all. In love enough for anything, emotional too soon. You got my invitation, now the rest is up to you. Kick it, rendezvous, make some time for me. Y'all, I finally got all of the landscape fabric stapled in and it feels so good to have this part done. Like I feel like this took forever, but it's done. So basically what I did was the fabric was already folded in half along the seam. So I just cut a slit right along the seam so that created a hole to be able to fit 
all of the fabric over each arb. And then once I had it in place, I did go back in and cut an X, as you guys can see right down here, just to give the base of the tree some room to grow and breathe. And then I did also decide to flip up this front end just to the second line. You can see like where the fabric is blowing in the wind. Just flipped it up just because I didn't feel like I needed that much coverage. The rest of this will be sheet mulched and I'll have room to plant. So, huh. Next project checked off the list. sheet mulching is done I'm ready to install my pavers and to help make transporting them so much easier I'm going to be using this super heavy duty garden cart that was sent to me by Vivor my boyfriend actually put this together for me and I'm just going in and adding in the sides I love how multifunctional this garden cart is it does hold up to 1400 pounds and it is convertible so you can remove the sides and turn it into a flatbed it also comes with a rubberized mat to protect the bottom and then also a thick bungee cord to help secure your items. Here I'm just demonstrating how spacious this garden cart is. It does have a flat bed that measures 44 inches by 30 inches. It's completely power coated steel, you guys. So it will stay in any outdoor conditions and it's completely convertible. You can convert this into a flat bed. You can also convert it into a hitch. So the handle is removable. You can attach it to the back of a lawnmower, a tractor or a trailer. It also has 15 inch tires for extra stability. So this is a super heavy duty garden cart. So here's a quicker look at the wall blocks that I decided to go with. These are the Carolina Blend from Home Depot and I just think they are beautiful, you guys. Do y'all see the different patterns? Like no two blocks are the same and I just think the blend is gorgeous. These are actually the same blocks that I used to create the beds on either side of my house. So I just decided to continue the uniformity back here in my backyard and I think it's going to be gorgeous.
Okay, so next task is going to be running drip irrigation to all of these arbovites. My access is actually right behind my arbovite here. If you can see right where my finger is, I do already have drip running through this entire bed. So I have a distribution line that runs all the way down. If you guys can see, actually, it's right there. So I think what I'm going to do is tap into that trench underneath my grass and run it to over on this side of the fence, like trench underneath the fence to this side. I think that'll be easier just because... I do have drip already existing in this bed as well. So my distribution line actually connects underneath the fence here to water this entire bed. I don't want to have to like dig underneath all the rocks and then trench this way. So I think it'll be easier to do it on the other side of the fence. completed so really quick let me explain what I did so I already have drip ran all through this bed so basically what I did was I tapped into the drip line here I buried it entrenched underneath the grass here added an elbow so that it'll tee off underneath my fence and then it comes out underneath the fence here underneath this paver and runs all the way down the back line so basically what I did was I ran a solid distribution line all the way down the back line of the fence and then I tapped into that using a barbed coupler, connected quarter inch drip line and then capped it off with a half gallon drip emitter on each side of the root ball. So that way each tree is getting a full gallon of water and the ones that I had to mount up I only added one drip emitter to it. I just didn't want them to get too much water because they're already getting water from my neighbor's gutters. But yeah, y'all, I am so happy with how automated this bed is going to be. Hose reel is mounted and oh my gosh, y'all, it looks so good. Like, look at that. 
The post matches my fence line perfectly and I love the sleek design and the colors. So this hose reel was sent to me by Vivor. It is a retractable hose reel. So this is gonna be a huge game changer in my garden. No more having to lug around big heavy hoses or having to manually reel them up. This is an automatic retractable hose reel. So the case holds 84 feet long of hose and it is a triple layer PVC hose. So you don't have to worry about it kinking up on you or any frost. It's a nice sturdy hose. It is also mounted so let me show you guys the features it's mounted here and it does do a hundred and eighty degree swivel so I can water in any direction that I want to it's also removable so if you want to store it over winter it does have a nice handle here where you just lift it up and to remove it you just pop up this handle and remove it completely off the mountain you can take it into your garage or wherever you want to store it it does come with this concentration nozzle for spraying and then you also get this nine pattern hose in sprayer, which is what I'll probably use the most. And I love that it has the thumb trigger. This is how all of my hose in sprayers are. So I'm so excited to try this out. Let me show you guys how far out the hose will go and show you how it retracts. Okay, y'all, so I've made it all the way to the back corner of my backyard and I still have some give. So this is definitely long enough to water my entire backyard. Let's see how it reels in. So I've walked up a few feet and it automatically will lock in place if you want it to lock at a certain length. It does that automatically. I'm just going to give it a nice little tug and it automatically starts to retract. And you definitely want to make sure that you hold on to the end as it's retracting because it does retract with some force. And you don't want to risk it just slapping and breaking something. And that's it. So it has a nice little stopper to stop the hose for you. I am so excited to have this added into my garden. Thank you again so much, Vivor, for sending this out to me. y'all first plant is in the ground and oh my gosh I am so in love with it y'all look at that oh it looks so perfect okay so not counting the arborvitaes <laughs> this is the first individual plant that I'm planting in this bed this is actually a peony called first arrival it's an Ito peony which is a cross between a tree peony and the traditional peonies Itos have sturdier stems so they don't do the flopping you don't have to stake them um, and they also grow a little bit more compact so I am so excited about this one here. I picked this up from my farmer market a couple weeks ago and it only had three buds on it and those three buds just opened up a few days ago and I am just in love with these blooms. Like look at that. Oh that's so so pretty. Like look at these blooms y'all. Oh, that is just gorgeous. So I definitely wanted to plant this here just because this is the view directly from my bedroom bay window. So I wanted to be able to see this when I wake up in the morning when it's in bloom. They bloom for about two to three weeks. So I will enjoy their blooms while I can. I think it fits this space perfectly. They grow about three by three. They do take full sun. So it'll get full sun all day long. And I think it'll be perfect here, y'all. So I am so excited for all the other plants that I'm going to be adding to this space. I am going to take my time just because I haven't really fully completed my design and where I want to put everything. But I just knew I wanted this one here. So Anywho, I'm going to go ahead and put down a layer of mulch along the back line. I've already started mulching over here. So I'm going to finish that and then we'll be back for more planting videos. All right, you guys. So I finished mulching everything. I do need to grab two more bags to finish this corner here. But the bed is fully mulched. It's completely done. And I am so, so in love with it. I'm so excited for all the planting space I have here. So this bed does measure 50 feet by 10 feet deep. It's 12 feet deep in the farthest part out. Oh, but it looks so good, you guys. Look at this. So I did finish up with the pavers. I had to bring them in. I originally had them out further here, but I had to bring them in so that my door can swing all the way open, 
which actually ended up working out perfect. I did put my pot on some pot feet. I just need to hook up the little bubbler for the drip. And I planted some pretty little annuals in here. They're closed up this morning just because the sun hasn't fully come out yet, but it's gonna fill in and be so, so pretty. And then of course I have my home strip arborvitaes all lined up. I did make sure to leave my grates exposed for my drainage problem. And oh, y'all, I'm just so in love with it. So the compost and mulch both need to sit about four to six weeks to allow everything to die down underneath and start decomposing. So I have plenty of time to get my thoughts together, my designs together. I'm going to take my time, y'all. I'm just gonna fill this bed in slowly as I pick up plants and my clearance plans. Y'all know how I do. So yeah, y'all, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it inspiring, entertaining. Thank you again, Vivor, for sponsoring this video. You guys definitely check out the description box. I'll have everything linked down there as well as my codes. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're interested in following along with my journey. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.